Hello everyone and peace over Christ all of you. Please invite your friends. Let us have some great time together. Today we are going to tell you why women should love Islam. Uh, you know, YouTube always send me, uh, suggest to me videos to watch because of what I do, you know. And I found this video is so astonishing. Actually, I felt I want to cry. Man, it's lucky to be a woman and a Muslim in the same time. I don't know why I did not figure out that, but today I'm going to have a different perspective at how women they view Islam. We have a lady here, she is from New Zealand and she is a convert. She is so excited. So I left her a comment and I asked her if she likes, she can join us live on air, if she dare. And she want to tell you the benefit of converting to Islam. And the title of her video is, Why so many women choose become Muslims? And I have a link for her in the video to give her a credit in the info. Uh, let us listen a little bit and I hope she will give us a good reason. But we will start from the beginning. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to our channel or welcome if you're new. Today we're talking on a very interesting topic mm -hmm. um, about women converting to Islam. If you've been considering converting to Islam or you just want to learn more about Islam, this video is definitely for you. Mm -hmm. Islam is literally the fastest growing religion in the world. True. That is true. Assalamu alaikum, my heart is breaking. Oh brothers and sisters, my soul is aching. Brothers and sisters, did you know that so many people are leaving Islam every day? Why would anybody leave such a beautiful religion? Why would they choose to become a sick disbeliever instead? A'udhu billah. Brothers and sisters, 100,000 Muslims are leaving Islam every single year. Over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. This is not a joke. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. Yes, we say that there are 1.6 billion Muslims in the world and Islam is growing day by day. But the standard narrative has holes. In and we are not proud of that. And we're not proud of that. Apostates are everywhere. They are among us. They are even people who memorize the Quran. They are prophets of the Quran. The youth are full of doubts. Our youth are full of doubts. And we tell them, doubts? What doubts, man? Doubts? What doubts, man? Have some guts, be a man. Have some guts, be a man. But nobody is answering their questions. And nobody's answering their questions. We tell them to stop questioning and to stop being emotional. And we tell them to be a Chad. Be a Chad. You can do it. I believe in you. But instead, they choose to be bad. We've seen this happen, unfortunately. We've seen this happen to a lot of people. If it continues like this, your child is going to become an apostate. Your, your child is going to become an apostate! Imagine your child, your child, the child that you are raising could end up with the disbelievers, with the kuffar, and go to hellfire. Hellfire will want to swallow them! Hellfire will roast them. Roast them! Toast them. Toast them! Break them. Break them! Shake them. Shake them! Hellfire, hellfire will annihilate them. And the rest of us will be watching. We'll be watching. Brothers and sisters, we must act now. We must do something about this. And what you can do is to donate to our channel so that we can do something. May Allah keep us firm. Never let us go astray. May Allah keep our children firm. If we don't take constructive steps now, this is going to become an avalanche. It is going to become an avalanche. A tsunami. A tsunami. The apostates, they are everywhere. They don't make it public, they hide it. They are leading prayers. They are leading prayers to the masjid. They are still living the life of a religious Muslim. And they are still leading that life while simultaneously declaring their apostates. Brothers and sisters, if you feel as strongly about this as I do, then please donate to us and our cause. You can make a one-time donation or a monthly donation. Please be generous, please give whatever you can so that we can take the responsibility and alhamdulillah spread apostasy. Donate now. Help now. You may even receive many gifts in heaven, in paradise, in Jannah. You can get a house next to me or next to some other very good looking man. <laughs> you have an opportunity right now. On this haram new year, you can do something halal and donate your money to us. So, 
So this lady, she is so excited, and Islam is the fastest grammar religion. <laughs> I don't want to talk about how you look like when you say that. <laughs> I will leave people to say that. Uh, but you know, uh, okay, let us say, I don't, I don't know, like, I mean, the fastest growing religion may be atheism, you know. Islam is dying. I mean, don't you see, are you an idiot? Are you stupid or what? Don't you see what happened in the Muslim country? Nobody want to practice Sharia law. You see, Islam is different from Christianity. Well, in a Christianity, we don't have a state where uh, rule, we rule. Like the Jews, they have that. The Muslim, they have that. We don't. So if you don't have, if you don't follow the law of Islam, that means you are not Muslim. You are not living in Islam. Islam is not just, uh, you know, two words. We speak them and we make a speech. However, uh, in the video, most of it is about donate to me. Uh, she have an orphan donate to me supposedly, and I'm sure she never been in those orphan area. But anyway, this is her business. You know, this is what I notice about all those who claim to be a convert is like donate to me, and support us so you can go to heaven. Well, if you donate to me, you will not go to heaven. This is not me. You cannot bribe God. Uh, in Islam, you can, and this is showing you the sign of corruption in this religion. But I want to show you what this lady she said. Which I find very interesting. Uh, I did not notice that Islam teach uh, women uh, uh, and men equality. I never thought about this before. But Alhamdulillah, she did enlighten me. I don't know. And you know, she spoke about she have relationship with Allah, and she have a communication with Allah. Okay, I don't know how that happened because even your prophet himself never spoke to Allah, never heard Allah voice. And when you mention what? Reason number one, Islam provides a sense of spiritual fulfillment. How you can have a spiritual fulfillment with your God himself is not a spirit. You see, when we say spirit, to connect in a spiritual way, I have to be connecting to something is a spirit too. Not a steel to spirit, not concrete to spirit. You cannot do that. So in order to have a religion which is a spiritual, you have to have a spirit God, but your God is not a spirit. If you don't believe me, I'm sure you do not know that because you're an idiot. You can go right now, search in Google, Prophet Google, peace be upon him. Search like, does Allah have a spirit? Hmm? Is he a spirit? Do you have a spirit? You will see the answer, no. So how you lie, claiming that you have a spirit or a spiritual relationship with Allah when your God himself is not even a spirit, which means spirituality and Islam, they don't match together. Islam is a physical religion based in physical action and physical behavior. So in order to be a Muslim, you don't need to even believe in Allah. You just say the Shahada and we will show you that from the Quran. But this is Islamic question and answer. It says here in the top, Islamic question and answer, Islam uh, 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 QA dot info you can go and i will post the head the, the the link in the uh, in the chat he's debating with the christian asking does god which means allah have a spirit the answer no you know praise be to allah blah 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 okay and then the answer is very simple allah is not a spirit he have nothing to do with the spirit and he is not never was so when you say uh he is a spirit that or a spiritual relationship that's against the nature of Islam because in order to have a spiritual relationship you have to connect to a spirit and that's not your God he says here this is your Imams and those are your scars not the blonde girl from New Zealand the spirit or soul is not one of the attribute of Allah rather than one of the things have been created by Allah so you have a spirit you don't he don't have a spirit so you lady, you are fooling yourself, lying to yourself, speaking about spiritual. Secondly, how you can have a spiritual relationship with God? He is unknown to you. All what you know about him, that his name is Allah. Even Muslims do not know who is Allah. 
All what you know is the name. Do you know anything else? Did he even spoke to Muhammad, came to Muhammad, show himself to Muhammad? No. Allah or Allah is a ancient God, exists long before Islam, and even the Quran mentioned that that the Mushrikeen, who they are pagan, they worship Allah too, and Allah have three daughters. So here I wonder, was the Mushrikeen who have three daughters of Allah, they have a spiritual relationship with Allah too? Weird. And then, when she, after she mentioned that, that she jumped to a different topic. She claimed that Islam gave women equality. Let me go. We don't want to play the whole video. You can watch it yourself. It's funny and stupid. You know. Uh, what is number two? Which part number two? She don't have. <laughs> Let's see here. Maybe here. I don't know. The right to own and inherit property. Oh, okay. So now she start talking about women's rights. Okay. Reason number two. Islam promotes gender equality. Islam. Absolutely. Islam promote gender equality. It sounds like you know feminine movement, hippie, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Islam promote what? You know what? I think I'm getting old, and I did not hear it correctly. Did I hear what you just said right? Islam promote what? It can't be true. You must be sure from what you are saying. Uh, hmm. quite we want things to be laid out and explained and islam gives that to so many yeah as an example islam explained to you how you can beat your wife which is really fantastic you know but we will go to that later many women including me reason number two islam promotes gender equality Islam promotes gender equality, which basically means that both men and women are equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, who can, who dare to say this is not true? <sighs> Do we have any Muslim in the chat want to call us and support what this lady is saying? Is she saying the truth or this is against what Islam teach? You know what? I'm not going to answer. Let me do this. I will go to YouTube and I will search for Muslims answering this issue. I think this would be a better solution. Because who knows Islam better than a Muhammadan? Nobody. As you know, you know. Women and men are, not, uh, are equal. Okay. Are men and women are equal in Islam? Okay. That's I think that will do. I did not watch this video before, but let us see what the Sheikh will say. And the men thinking that this is a prime concept in, in Islam. Women and men are equal. This is totally un Islamic. <laughs> this is totally wrong. <laughs> what, what, what? By the way, I never saw this video before. I just I search. <laughs> are women and men are equal in Islam? <laughs> and this is Sheikh Asim al-Hakim. He have 753,000 and he live in Saudi Arabia. But I have to give you a credit, you know. I'm sure you know more than him. I mean, who is this guy? He's an idiot. <laughs> you know, there is no way that this Sheikh with his beard he knew more than you. I mean, look at you. Your knowledge is dripping. Your faith is whipping. Your education is hipping. So in Islam, women and men are equal. <laughs> That's hot. Look like lady, you are giving us a new religion we never heard of. Do you think this guy is an idiot? Maybe he's Islamophobic. You know what? I think he's an Islamophobic. And it's funny, she spoke about Islamophobia in the video. 
but she forgot that the Muslims are forbidding Christians from breaching the gospel. Who is the one have a phobia? If you have a gospel, they will arrest you. If you celebrate a Christmas, they will arrest you. If you establish even a church inside your home, they will, they will kill you. Uh, and they speak about phobia. We are the one have a phobia, not them. Lady, uh, I will get back to you, but I want to see this Islamophobic sheikh, what he is saying about women being equal to men. You know, for some reason, his voice is not right. I think because he have no equal internet. A lot of the women and the men thinking that this is a prime concept in, in Islam. Women and men are equal. This is totally un-Islamic. This mm. is totally wrong. It's not even logical. How can they be equal? In Islam, in the Quran, Allah says clearly, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى And... What? The Quran says that? Liar. It doesn't say that, CP. <laughs> the Quran said, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْثَى But the lady from New Zealand, she said, no, they are equal. You know what? I think this guy, he have a fake Quran. I, I don't think, I think I'm sure. There is no way there is such a statement in the Quran. <laughs> are you kidding me? Quran say that? Let me get you busted. It doesn't say that. Let us go to the Quran and see if the Quran says that or not. Sure not. Chapter 3, verse number 36. Yes, female is not the same as a male. It turned to be true. <laughs> but you know what? I know what he is doing. He is taking it out of context. I know you, Sheikh. You are Islamophobia. Hmm. You think he can fool us, Potato? We got you busted. You are taking the verse out of context. A male is not similar to a female. They're different. But nowadays, people who don't have Islamic background, people who have never touched the Quran or finished it. What are you talking about? Are you telling me this woman never touched the Quran? By the way, according to the Quran, if you touch women and shit, you cannot pray or touch the Quran. Just to let you know. In case you do not know. Hmm? The Quran said, if you come back from al ghaid or you touch a woman, you cannot even pray. And for sure you cannot pray, touch the Quran. And I find it very nice of Allah that he put women and shit in the same time, in the same line in the Quran. It's chapter, you know, uh, 4 verse number 43, you know, it says that if you touch women or come back from shit, and here the Muslim, you know, look, look at the translation of what they're saying. It's not even there. What sexual impurity? What the heck is that? You know, it says if you if and actually here yeah it says janaba so yeah, this is true the other the, the other verse doesn't say that and there here can tell you and if you are in trouble in the road and if you were you know uh, 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 like uh, uh, you know you want to pray supposedly uh, if you don't find uh, water uh, you send which is weird and then it says if you came from the answer of nature. Or you are in contact with women, and here between two brackets they say bisexual relationship, absolutely false. Nowhere it says that. Nowhere it says that. That's a fabrication. So as you see, Islam make women equal to uh, shit. It is back to the phobia sheikh, who is not telling the truth about Islam. In their lives, let alone studied it. They come and say, no, no, Islam promotes equality between the genders. This is not right. Islam promotes and endorses justice and fairness. Uh -huh. So a woman has a role that a man cannot do. 
And a man has roles that women cannot do. Let us see what a man can do and what women cannot do in Islam. That's a good thing. As an example, in Islam, you can beat your wife. The woman cannot beat her husband. And this is in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. This verse is not telling a man how to uh, hit or beat up his wife. This is telling how a, ma a man or a husband how to defend himself against his wife. Man, Mimi Hijab, he turned the verses in chapter 4, verse number 34, that the man is a victim. And you know what? I can tell a woman like this, she can beat her husband so easy. So the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34, is about a man protecting himself from women harm. You know that women, they wear high heels. It's not a secret. We know that women, they have long nails. It's not even, they don't even hide it. And even these days, they are buying things which is very harmful. Long, fake lashes. Do you think they buy them for nothing? <laughs> Good luck. So, Mimi Hijab saying the man is defending himself. Let us go to the Hadith and see what the Hadith says about women. And what is the proof of what he is saying? This is the hadith where actually the reason for the verses to come down about beating the women happened. This lady from New Zealand, she said, huh, I can't explain to you how happy I am, relationship with Allah, how it's good to be a Muslim woman. But all the evidence says the opposite. And as you see, this is Aisha, the wife of your prophet. She is the first-hand experience of how happy Muslim women is. Rafa divorced his wife, whereupon Abdul Rahman ibn Zubair, etc., married her. Aisha, she said, that the lady, one lady, came to her wearing a green veil and uh, complained to her, to who? To Aisha, of her husband and showed her a green spots in her skins caused by beating. Now we will see if this guy defending himself from his aggressive wife, as Mimi Hijab, he said. It was the habit of ladies to support each other. How filthy ladies are you? Huh. Support each other against the will of Allah? Shame on you. May Allah make you lose your eyelashes. So when Allah Messenger came, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any suffering women, I mean suffering, as much as a believing woman. But this lady in her video, she said that women in Islam is perfect. Islam is perfect for women. Aisha, she said that in the time of Muhammad, the most suffering women is not non-Muslim women. No, it is a Muslim woman. And what they are talking about? Look, her skin is a greener than her clothes. Okay, why? Why? What is the reason? You know, because she don't want to sleep with him. As simple as that. She married this guy so she can go to previous husband because there's a verse in the Quran, disrespect women and make her treat her like a whore. So if a man divorces his wife three times, she can't come back to the previous husband unless a new husband, excuse my language, if her, not marry her. Because as you see, this man here, he married her, still so she can't go back unless the prophet explained, unless he if her. If we read together, we will see. Uh... This is the, the fifth verse of the Quran. Treating women as a piece of garbage, as if she is a, a donkey, as if she's an animal. You know, male, they jump on her. No respect. And the funny, she said, Islam protect women. Is that how you protect women? So now this poor woman, she want to go back to her previous husband because she have kids from him. I'm sure she don't care for the husband. She care for the kids. So... But she cannot come back unless she if a new husband not only marry him so what this poor woman she did as you see chapter 2 verse number 230 the quran made a condition that if a man divorces his wife which means for the third time she cannot she is not lawful for him until she marry a new husband here the word married translation for the word tanka which means to if not to marry that's false because already he is a husband so he is a husband she have to f the new husband and this is what we see here in the story that this woman she married the husband but she don't want him to have sex with her 
And I'm talking about not just sex, I'm talking about the effort, because this is what Tankah means. Excuse my language. So here the women, she refused to sleep with the man, and then when Muhammad learned the story, uh, he listened to the husband, he listened to the wife, he never asked the man why you did beat your wife. Never asked the husband even why you are beating her, man. In fact, Muhammad, he said, no man should be questioned for why he is beating her, his wife. So I find it very deceiving of you uh, to say that Islam treats you and men equally because I cannot believe that you are married to a Muslim man and this is why you converted to Islam and you make it as a business. You never heard that the man Islam can beat his wife. You never heard that the man Islam can have four wives. You cannot have four husbands. How you are equal if you have if he can have four wives and you cannot uh, you cannot have can you have four men? If you can have four men, then that's equality. Can you beat the man the same as he can beat you? Chapter four, verse thirty-four. Then if you can, okay, that's mean you are equal. Do you even inherit? She mentioned in the video that the Muslim women she inherit. In the Quran, a woman, she inherit half of the man, not equal. But look what Muhammad said. Omar reported, and this is the caliphate of Allah, and the Muslim, they claim he is so just man. A man, the Prophet saying, a man will not be asked about why he beat his wife. So, Muslim women, they are enjoying the equal gender and who is teaching that a blonde woman from a New Zealand married to a Muslim man just wait until he go to the Middle East and he get a brand new wife she is in the age of your daughter and then I want you to make a video about it which means that both men and women are awarded the same rights and they are what the same rights, uh huh. Even in heaven, you will you will be just a sex toy. He will he will have all the females, and you will be one of his females. Privileges, privilege under Islam. Ah. Islam granted women so many rights. No way. Tell us, like what? That were not afforded to women of other faiths and other. No way. Man, Islam did beat a Christianity. Like in a Christianity, you know, Jesus, he spoke about the, the husband. He have, when he married the wife, they will become one. And he will give himself, his life to his family, the same as Jesus gave himself to the church. Which means, in Christianity, the woman, she became equal to the church. And the man, he sacrificed his life for his family and his wife. In Islam, do you have that? She is saying yes, even better, way better. What are you talking about? Cultural backgrounds uh -huh. at the time of its revelation. Uh -huh. For example, Islam gives women the right to education. Oh boy. You know what? I like this uh, statement. Islam gave the women the right of education. Can you give me the reference, lady? <laughs> You know, when those people, they say things, okay, I you will not find one person in the, in the text underneath saying, okay, sister, can you show us where in, the, in, in Islam it says women, they have right to education? It's just a question, you know, when you say Islam, it's mean it is in the text of Islam, it's in the teaching of Muhammad. Uh, where we can find that? Do we have any Muslim can... affirm or help what she is saying as I know it is the opposite the only education a Muslim woman she can have that she can learn how to swing clothing and Quran and not only that Aisha she said 
Don't teach them even how to write and read. Let us find the Hadith, because maybe we are making things up. Maybe. Hmm. In fact, not only, uh, uh, just a correction, Aisha should not say, teach them the Quran, teach them only the chapter of An-Nur, only one chapter in the Quran. All right. So let us go to the Hadith. Let us see first if we can find it in English before we go. Hmm. All right, maybe not here. Okay, let's use Google Translation then. Durar. And I will always, as you know, always we use Islamic website only. So Muslims cannot say we are making things up and we will show the reference. For the hadith. And I know Muslim will say to you, uh, it's not Sahih, it is the uh, Da'if, uh, it is uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you know, you can say whatever you want. But we knew that Taliban, they closed the school. The first thing they did when they took over the government, they closed the schools. Why? Because this is what the wife of the prophet said, that the prophet said, that don't teach them how to write, how to read. Don't teach them how to write, how to read. Don't make them live in rooms. And don't teach them to write. Just teach them how to swing. And this is the reference in the front of you. Don't teach them to write. So when you say that Islam give command, to teach women, uh, to educate women, uh, why nobody is asking you where you get this from? Did your prophet send Aisha to school when he married her at the age of six? Did she? What education we are talking about? So I find it very embarrassing that you are saying things far away from the truth the right to own and inherit property the right to own and inherit a property well you see uh muslim women she have the right to inherit a property hmm yeah i just heard about this guy hakimi who his wife divorced him and she is a muslim to avoid his wife to take 50 percent of his income because this is what the Christians gave the wife. He put it in the name of his mother. But let us see how Islam give you the right to inherit. According to the Quran, a woman, she inherit half of the man. But remember, she said, not me, uh, that women and men are equal. So then we should have equal inheritance. Correct? So let us go to the verses in the Quran. <clears throat> oh boy. How many of you they you are going to download the video? You know, before I, I ask about how many of you will make a short video about uh, Lady Dawa will... Uh, uh, debunking Christianity in half minute. There's only two people make a video. I uh, we have uh, one hundred thousand here, two hundred thousand in the other account. I don't know how many, and only two people make a short video. This is telling you how much um, how much people care. But anyway, I do my part. And if you don't do yours, one day you will have your daughter like this. She been fooled by somebody just because she is looking for a husband. And she will marry him, and then he will use her to promote Islam. Uh, in Islam, let us see. I will open the verses. 
remember women in Islam she can inherit she can inherit but in reality women in Islam inherit nothing and I will explain to you why because when you are a woman you are a mother and if you are a mother you take one to eight of the inheritance and actually if you have many wives then you tell me how much the money you will get now I know some Muslim scholars they uh, uh, you know they give uh, different numbers and they say uh, you know okay the Quran says that men are taken they are going to take twice but this is about a daughter not about a wife which is a mother later so um, a wife she don't inherit her husband two to one no she don't do that they have no right to do that there is different uh, uh, verse in the Quran it says uh, uh, the the one to six of uh, uh, of the inheritance will go to the mother but this is only if there is certain com like uh, the conditions because his father will inherit his sons will inherit and the mother will inherit but the mother she will take a very little tiny Of that let us show verse by verse from the Quran so we can laugh at what she said about the women she have the right to inherit the first one we will show you is about she is going uh, to take the uh, 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 one to four but remember one to four is going to be one to eight why because there's four wives <laughs> Because now the one to four will be divided into four women. Now, in in some scenario, there is only uh, uh, one wife. In this case, she will take one to four. But the wives, their share in the inheritance is one to four. Doesn't matter how many they are. If they are three, the one to four will divide it into three. If there are four. The one four will divide it into four. So you will end with what? So let us say that your husband he passed away and he have a hundred dollar. Twenty five dollars goes for the wives. If they don't have a children you will take the half if you see in the verse here that mean the four wives will have they will they, they will they will not inherit the man they will have only the half the four wives so now the half will be divided to four if they have a children's and there is no way there's four women none of them have children's if they have a child you will get the fourth just one child from any of them so when this woman she speak about the women and men are equal what is the equality and then there is other cases as you see uh, you, you can read the rest it's very funny and very fun you know like uh, to, you will end at the end with like one to six And by the way, Islamic division of inheritance, it's impossible. Nobody can practice it. If you, if you do the grammar, if you do the, 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 uh, uh, the calculation, you will find that what, what Muhammad just said here is so stupid, it's impossible. Nobody can practice it. Nobody can practice it. A different verse in the Quran, talking about the kids inheriting their father. Here we are talking about wives. In the chapter 4, verse number 11, if we go just to the verse before it, it says, 
that the male inherit twice as the female. But this woman, she said, that women in Islam and men are equal. Not to forget to mention that the woman who is the one who needs support when the parents die, especially in Islamic society where women opportunity is very limited. The man, he can jump in the street, whatever he do, he make money. But this woman, she what she would do? She can't even move with the veil she is wearing. So what we do, we give it twice more to the male and we give the female half of the male. So, which means if there is many boys in the family, the females get nothing at the end. But in her video, she said that women, she have the right to inherit. But don't she know what inheritance is about? And the same mentioned in many verses in the Quran, like the same chapter. I mean, the, the Quran is a stupid book. You will find the same thing repeat all over, but none of them make sense. And none of them is, is, a, is even possible to divide. If there is only a daughter, two or more. Look at the translation. <laughs> <laughs> Let us read together so we can laugh. Allah command you as regards your children's in, of in, like inheritance to the male the portion equal to, uh, to that of the two females. If there are, if there are, one daughter, two daughters, they have the third of the share. What? <laughs> listen, listen. So now the man, he don't even have boys. You see, the boys are favored by Allah. The boy, he will inherit the big cheese. But now the guy, he don't even have a boy. He don't have a son. He have daughters. Okay, but what if the one of them they are females, the daughters, you know? Here you will see in the translation, it says, if there is one, the, the verse, by the way, never say the one, like uh, 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 only daughter. It says if there is uh, uh, like more than two, right away, jump into more than two. They will take the third, of what he left, which mean, if he have 10 daughters, 20 daughters, remember Muslim, they marry a lot, you know, they, uh, Osama bin Laden, he has 60 brother, male, just male, 60, 60 male. So only daughter, like, you know, if he have more than two daughters, all the daughters together will take the third. If you calculate your number, you find that you get nothing. Because the third is going to be divided in all the daughters. The two thirds of the inheritance, if only one, go to the parents. The six of the share of the inheritance, if the deceased left children, no children, and then he go to the mother. If you have nobody. If you have a mother, this person, his mother, she will take the six, one to six. The mother of the guy, not the wife, the, the parents. And if you are a wife, you will take the six. And if we divide them as before, they will end with one to eight. Because four wives, 
if it's 1, 4, with 4, y, would be 1 to 8. Not only that, the man now, he is going to chase his wife. And look how unjust. If your wife, she die, you take the half. <laughs> this is verse number 12. So how come if the husband, he die, the women, she don't take the half? Are you with me, guys? Do you see the do you, do you see how the unjust work? How come if the man he die, one fourth will go to you, and there's other options, we'll go all the way to one six. We will end at the end is uh, one eight and more or or less. But in the case of the man, if the wife die, he inherit the half. How come the wife, if the man he die and he don't have kids, they don't take it exactly the same? Actually, if you go back, he, he is saying he is saying that. Let's go back a little bit, but just to show you how stupid it is. Hmm. Uh, Allah Rika command you as regard the children inheritance, the male and the female. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Uh, where we will find which verse I forgot I think 167 167 maybe let's see Okay. No, we go actually, let's go to 12 again. So here you will see in 12. In that which your wife leave, your share is a half if they have no children. But if they have a children, you get the fourth. But remember, the women she cannot marry for husband. So the fourth here is a real fourth. In the case of the husband, oh, sorry, the wife, there's four wives. So the fourth is eight. Because the fourth is going to be divided twice. And that will make them eight. So she will take one to eight instead of one to four. So why the man he will get one to four? If they have no children, you take all their money, half of it. So it turned to be everything she said about the equality of inheritance is absolutely false. Do we have any Muslim have an objection? So if we say, uh, the wife she dies she have a hundred dollar we will use the same number hundred dollar the husband will take half if she have no children he will take fourth if she have a children and uh, that will be twenty five dollars but if the husband die the wives will take one to four if there is you know as as the verse explained and then one to four will be uh, for every wife right but not every wife will want have to one to four because that means the wives will take 100 percent no one to fourth from the wife's side so if it's wife two three four all of them they will share that one four of the inheritance so if it's 100 that will mean one four is 25 then we have to divide the 25 into four women so you end with what six dollars five dollars Four dollars. So it turned to be that everything this woman she said is absolutely false. There's no women in the uh, uh, equality in any way, any mean.
the right to keep her own last name, the right to divorce and custody of the children. Okay, the women she have the right of divorce and custody. That's absolutely false. A woman she can divorce only if she requested that in the contract. Because remember, Islam believe in contract, sex contract. So if you put condition and the man he give his right of divorce, this is his right, not your right. This is not his right to give to you normally, unless he voluntarily, he say, okay, you know what? I give you the right to divorce me. And we can find tons of reference for that. You can search like in Google, you will find, uh, you know, maybe I can search for a videos in YouTube so we can get the sheikh from Sheikh Asim or any sheikh, you know. <laughs> so the right to divorce, where? Where? As you see, this woman, she is trying to get divorced from her husband. Her husband is beating her and he will not let her go. And Muhammad, he said to her, if this is your intention, you want to go back to your previous husband, you should know that you cannot get back to your husband unless this man, he tastes your orgasm and you taste his orgasm. So this woman, she is being beaten simply because the husband, he want to rape her. She don't want to sleep with him. And this is the reference in the front of you. Read carefully what Muhammad he said to her. The husband, he said, I'm very strong and I can satisfy her in bed, but she is disobedient. She won't go to go back to Rifa. Rifa is the previous husband. Allah Messenger said to her, if this is your intention, then know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless Abdul Rahman, he F you. Remember, the Muslim delight is saying, the word in the verse in the Quran says, Tankah means to marry. No, she's married already to the guy. But she don't want to sleep with him. Muhammad make it clear. You can't get out. And Muhammad make it clear that the man have the right to beat you because you are not taking off your panties. But this woman, she is saying to you that a Muslim woman, she have many rights. Like what? Like to be beaten. Like to be raped. Shouldn't Muhammad say, okay, you know what? The women, she don't want you. Let her go, man. She don't want you. Okay, she want to go to previous husband? She's not allowing you to sleep with her? Shouldn't he say to him, you know, why you want to take a woman against her will? As you see, this woman, she is saying that Muslim women, they have the rights. Do you have the right to say no to the husband in the bed? No, he will beat you. And he will beat you until your skin is greener. The Muslim, they lie, they say, oh, uh, you know, Muslims, we beat them with miswak. Miswak is a very long, long route. The funny is the Mohammedan, when they lie to people, like especially Western, uh, they say uh, the prophet he taught us to te to beat them with the miswak. Do you know how small the miswak is? A toothbrush. That is a lie. The miswak is a tree. And the Muslim, they cut from that tree, especially the roots, for they are very flexible. And Muhammad, in his time, the people used them to beat their camel with it. For it doesn't break, it is root, and it stays strong for a long, long time. So it's going to be like a leather belt. You beat with it the animal. And then the shepherd, when he is saying, watching his animals, he put the end of this wood in his mouth and he clean his mouth with it, which is a savage way. Anyway. I mean, it's old days. There's no toothbrush at that time, so we understand. It's okay. But when they say to you, Miswak is the little tiny thing which we clean our teeth with it, that's absolutely false. 
You see this uh, piece you see now, those are after they cut them, you can see the cut, they are really long. And if you if the if you beat you with it, it's it's extremely harmful. So this woman, she was lying to everybody about women rights. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us and tell us why Muslim women who they are convert they are lying about Islam? Why they lie? I will tell you why. She is trying to make the husband who took over her happy. Most of women who convert to Islam, I don't want to be rude, but based on what I saw, they are women who they are neglected in their society. No men want to marry them for a reason or other. I'm not going to judge you because of your look, no. But it's reality. Like in USA, I saw a woman. She is 65 years old. The husband was not even 19. He's from Morocco. Well, he want to get a green card. He go in the chat. He said to her, honey, I love you. I'm crazy about you. This 65 years old, she would never dream to have a husband. He is 19 or 18 years old. He loved her. And this is what Muhammad did with Khadija. He married her because she is so rich. And as long you are talking about uh, marriage and women right in the video which showed you you have a little child there she is not even maybe five years six years old well this is the age of Aisha and you are talking about women rights so is it women rights or where is the children rights so not only you don't have right as a woman you are nothing but an abused human even children's they are abused and they are raped this is Aisha saying from her own mouth that the Prophet married her at the age of six and he have full intercourse which means from six to nine he was molesting her by putting his private part between her legs at the age of nine he have full intercourse not only that the hadith shows that the mother of Aisha she was feeding her daughter cucumber <laughs> and date so she can grow fast because so she is so tiny and so small how that can be women rights we are talking about children now you know we are not talking about we are not talking about women six years old so what we do we start feeding them like a cow so she can get fat and we let her sleep in the bed with Muhammad let me see the hadith I'm, I'm going to look for it you see I don't have an active admins when I say something they post the hadith our admins here they are having coffee they are not here to help okay let us see uh... let us find it oh, we are typing All right. Let us search in the Muslim website for the hadith. Hmm. Where we can find the hadith.
I mean, can you believe how small she is? Here we go. And this is very authentic hadith because you know the Muhammadan, they will say to you, this is not authentic, right? Aisha, she said, my mother intended to make me gain weight to send me to the house of the messenger of Allah. You know, the Muslim now, they are slaughtering sheep and they call this is Eid al-Fatr. In fact, this is Adha because both Eid, they have celebration. They are Adha. They are slaughtering. Aisha now is getting ready to be slaughtered. Her mother, she starts feeding her like crazy so she can gain weight because she is so small. She is six years old girl. So she said my mother intended to make me gain weight to send me to the house of the messenger of Allah. But nothing which she desired benefit me, benefited me. Till she gave me cucumber with a fresh, fresh date to eat. And then I gained as much weight as she desired. And then they shipped her to Muhammad by Amazon. And this is a very authentic hadith. As you see, it says Sahih. Sahih means authentic. But this woman in the video, she is speaking about women's rights and why women, they should be happy to convert to Islam. Are you willing to give your daughter at the age of five or six? After you feed her with a cucumber, you idiot, to a man at the age of 54? So those women in the West society or any society who they are neglected because they don't maybe look good, overweight, etc. A Muslim man, he will marry them because this is, they would call it jihad, spread Islam by having more babies and he will marry her for a few years. Who cares? I mean, there's no marriage in Islam. It's just a sex contract. He fulfilled his desire, a new woman. He have make new babies and then he get a new one. But everything she said is absolutely false and out of the line. And now I want to mention an additional right you did not mention in your video. Do you know that in Islam, a man, he have the right to lie to you? Yes, sister, yes. Enjoy your right as a Muslim. Uh, I'm married and I... Uh, kind of uh, thought about get, having a second wife without my first wife knowing but she found out and uh, she left my house went to her parents and is now asking me to you know let her go and I'm trying to convince her that it was a mistake and then you know and I don't want it anymore or something like that what's the best course of action for me because she thinks that I'm a very bad person and and some of the things she thinks are true but I'm willing to work on myself I'm really uh, scared and everything so being uh, okay uh, yeah. advise me what should I, I will advise, advise you inshallah uh, man says from Saudi Arabia he wanted to marry a second wife without telling his first wife his first wife came to know now she's uh, asking for divorce how can he convince her not to get uh, a divorce and to come back and to believe him when he says that he will not do that by the way in islam you can force your wife to come back home even you can ask the police to arrest her it's called baytul ta the house of obedience so if the wife if this guy he want he can call the police literally he will file a report that his wife she left the house without his permission she will be wanted she will become wanted the police will announce her name everywhere in the country she cannot leave any time the police see her she will be captured and she will be brought like a goat to the husband house so this guy obviously being so nice and he don't want to do that you know uh, but look what the sheikh is saying to him remember the woman there she said to us this this blonde woman women they have right in islam are you kidding me look what he will say to him and again or attempt to do it again <laughs> this is uh, with all due respect, yani, yani, I'm like your father. Huh? Uh, uh, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. You should not have attempted this from the first place. If 
you are not a man enough to get married to a second woman don't even dream about it because you're so why this woman she did not tell us that in islam a real man he got more wives why she don't want to mention to other women that in Islam, the real man is the one who gets another wife. You don't know? Or you know and you are hiding it, you are just doing business. This is a Quran Yuga, peace be upon him, is going to answer you more in the topic. And look, he's very romantic, Muslim too, you know. Trust me, he will marry you if your husband divorces you. They will take anything. He have candles, look how romantic they are. Flowers, oh, look. Very romantic Muslim men. And now you will hear about your right to be lied to. The husband, he have the right to lie to. Do you know that? Hmm. His first wife before marrying a second wife. Hold on, what? Is it a sin if a man did not tell his first wife before marrying a second wife? Is it a sin? That's a good question. You see, the women, she have right in Islam. Is it a sin if a man, he did not tell his wife that he is going to marry a second wife? Is that a sin? The question poses that is it a sin if a man was already married, if he takes a second wife? You know, the only one who say the word sin correctly is Zakir Naik. Is it a thin? Is it a thin? It's not thin, it's thick. Yeah, is it a thin? Ah, oh, okay. Explain to us the question again. I mean, you just said the question. Why are you repeating it again? The question poses that is it a sin if a man was already married, if he takes a second wife, is it a sin if he does not tell his first wife? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the glorious Quran. No way. Allah, he mentioned what? In the Quran, what he mentioned? In Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number three. Oh, here we see the women right. Let us see the women right. Marry women of a choice in twos, threes, or fours. But Start with twos, not one. The Quran mentioned that. Twos, twos, twos. Don't break the fuse. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. Well, if you can't do justice. And now this woman, she says, see? It says justice. Uh, justice in what? Beating you? Well, those who own cats and dogs, they put food for all the cats so they eat. They don't feed, feed one cat and don't feed the other cat. What is justice? What justice mean? And we will go to justice. You will see Muhammad. He was not justice to his wives. The wives of Muhammad, they send daughter Fatima to Muhammad asking him to be just with his wives. All the gifts go to Aisha. And then Muhammad, he said, Oh, Aisha is like a tharid for me. It's a favorite dish. It's like rice for me compared to other food. Muhammad, he compared women as dishes, and Aisha, she is favorite dish. So where is the justice? In fact, the Quran says clearly, you cannot be justice with women. The same chapter in the chapter of uh, uh, Nisa. Hmm. Oh, I'm typing in English again. And this is showing you the contradiction, because the Quran make it clear. In the same chapter, read with me and see see the stupidity of this Quran. Chapter 4, verse number 3, it says, uh, marry only one if you cannot be unjust. Chapter 4, verse 129, it says, you will never be just. And the Muslim, they add the word perfect justice. That's false. Nowhere it says perfect. Where is, where is the word perfect coming from? Change the translator, you will see the word perfect is gone. Perfect? Well, I thought the only one can be perfect is God. Uh, there is anyone can be perfect judge beside God, Abdul. Here we go. And you will not be able to be equitable between your wives. The same chapter. So the Quran says if you cannot have cannot be just, equitable, uh, marry only one. Okay. Okay. That's good. So the condition is there. I will feed them equally. I will give them clothes equally. Even I will put it <clears throat> there equally. 
I'm going to count how many times. Equally. But the Quran confirmed you cannot do it equally. So how we can do it, yet we cannot do it. And the Quran says, if this is book made by other than Allah, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. Now we go to Mr. Zakir Naik, who is answering about if it's thin, thin, to uh, have a new wife without in the previous uh, wife. Is it a thin? We will find out in a second. Choice in twos, threes or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. So Allah gives the permission for a Muslim man to marry two, three or four women. But if they can't do justice, marry only one. Mm -hmm. So in Islam, it is permitted to marry up to maximum four wives. But if you know, like uh, I'm glad Muhammad he put a limit for the Muslims, but he did not put a limit for himself because he's a decent man. Muhammad have unlimited number, uh, open any woman she can offer herself. Muhammad is ready. But Muhammad he put a limit for uh, this is telling you how how cult leaders work. They have always a privilege. They are sex privilege and money privilege. The fifth of the booty, the best of the booty, unlimited numbers of wives. The Muslims didn't have any of this. They have only limited four. However, they can divorce four every day. I'm sure all women, they love to have a husband. He marries second wife, third wife, fourth wife, tons of kids in the street, and then he cannot feed them. And then, he will, you know, we will join ISIS. Yeah, I mean, life is fun if you marry a Muslim. And then if you complain, he can beat you. He can jeer you. Uh, the Quran, in chapter 4, verse number 34, it says, وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجَةِ Jail them in their rooms. Not only beat them, jail them in their rooms. Continue, as I can make. If you can't do justice between your wife, then Allah says marry only one. So based on this, it is not required for a married man to take the permission of his wife before marrying a second woman. <laughs> neither is he obliged or neither is it compulsory for him to inform <laughs> What are you talking about, man? You better go learn Islam from this blondie woman. You know? She's going to go to the gym soon, and there she will learn more about Islam, the Islamic gym. What? You don't even need to tell the wife that you will have a new wife? No need. It's not even... <laughs> just do it. Who care about her? She is just a piece of... Uh... Zachary Naik, are you sure? You know, for me, I have a feeling that this female lady, she knew better that about Islam from Zachary Naik. For sure. And now I want to see if your husband, when last time he went to the Middle East, if he have a new wife or not. He will tell you, I want to go and visit my mom in Jordan. The same what happened to a woman. I spoke to her. Uh, hey, you know, you know. Yeah. And actually, I saw even, I don't know if it's the same woman, uh, uh, sending a, a, an ear, like a request to a Muslim website, saying, my husband, he did lie to me. He didn't marry another woman. He go to his to visit his parents. And then I discover he married in the, in the shaky he says to her, First of all, you have no right even to ask him if he marry a new woman or not. Secondly, he should not and he don't have to tell you. Number three, a decent woman is the one who don't even ask her husband such a question. It turned to be the woman is the whore. But this woman, and by the way, I see that you did your eyebrows. Oh, no. That is haram. That is haram. You will go to hell. Uh, the men, they can't take hair from their face. Muhammad, he used to do a nora, which is sugar, taking hair from all his body. But if a Muslim woman, she take hair from her eyebrows, she will go to hell and Allah will curse her. Let me show you the hadith. You are a bad Muslim woman. Shame on you. Allah, Muhammad said, Allah curse 
those women who practice tattooing and those women who have themselves tattooed and those women who take remove hair from their eyebrows what if you remove hair from your eyebrows Allah will curse you this God he is not cursing people who have sex with Aisha at the age of six but he cursed women because they take hair from their eyebrows. Hmm? I mean, this is must be true. Somebody says, CP, is it true that you have four children? Jesus said to me, my friend, yeah, you know, and you are one of them. Yeah. What for, my friend? I don't even know how many. Are you kidding me? Last time I saw a dream, I was with 72 versions, and all of them, they were so good, equally. I can describe for you. The funny is, even the version in, the, in Islam, in the heaven, all of them, they have the same face, the same look, the same sound, and the same eyes, the same hair, the same height, the same age. So what's the point of having 72 if all of them look the same? What the heck is that? All of them look the same. So what the point? But anyway, anyway, I mean, this woman, she did not know. May Allah forgive her. Let us say, let us ask Allah for to forgive you for taking hair from your eyebrows because now you are in a danger of going to hell. Ah, I don't want to forget too that your prophet, he says, Muslim women, majority of them, they will go to hell. Why? What the heck? Why? Well, because you are a woman. Are you serious? Yes. Women are, according to Muhammad, Naqisatu Aqlin Wadin. They have they have half a brain. As you see all of those references in the front of us, you can check the reference yourself. You see the numbers on the screen, you can type them in your Google. Muhammad he says the majority of people of Hellfire are females. And here you see that Muhammad really he appreciate women a lot to the point that the majority of women they will go to hell however if you give your money to Muhammad and this is what you're asking people to do to give you donation in your page if you give money to Muhammad you will go to heaven look look he said to majority of you will go to hell you know uh, read carefully you know look what he said look what he said uh, he preached to the people, admonished them, and then he walked on till came to women and preached to them. Muhammad preaching now. He's a preacher. And admonished them. What the heck? And asked them to give alms for the most of them are a fuel of hell. What? Those are Muslim women. They are the most fuel of hell. And do Muhammad knew the future? Muhammad he knew who's going to go to hell. Yes, he went. According to the night journey, he went to heaven. He saw the majority there in the hell. Woman. That's what he's talking about. A woman having dark spot in her cheek stood up and said, Why so a messenger of Allah? Women, they will go to hell. He says, <laughs> oh, Okay. For you grumble often and you show an in, in, in the gratitude to your spouse. And then they began giving alms actually here this is not a correct it says naqisatu aqlin wadin but you will notice here when they start giving him his eyebrows muhammad now they will not send them to hell but if you go back a little bit you will see he told them the reason because you have half a brain and half religion half brain and half religion read carefully the women actually should not ask him uh, what it says here in translation in Arabic it says differently he says let, let me read uh, for you he said I have seen okay hold on uh, so he saw a bunch of women he said to them you should give women folk you should give charity so now charity is what he need the donation donation and ask much forgiveness for I saw you and the block among the devil of hell 
a wise lady. Look, she's a wise lady. I thought women are stupid. In the same hadith says women are stupid. Among them said, why messenger it is of Allah that our folk in black in hell? Upon this, the prophet, he says, you curse so much and grateful to your spouse. I have none lacking. I, and I have seen none lacking of common sense and failing in religion, but like you, you know, and the translation here, by the way, is false. You know, it says, not failing in religion. Naqis, the word Naqis, we minus. And Naqisa, the word Naqisa, when you say it to a female, that means you are really bad. Usually we use it for a word as a whore, Naqisa. So, uh, at the same time, robbing the wisdom of the wise. Beside you, upon this, women remarked, Mimi Hijab in his video with the Dean show, he says, oh, uh, no, the, the Dean show, he said to him, Islam is not like Christianity, putting the women down and making the women look the, the, the guilty one. But as you see here, first, this is false. In Christianity, we don't do that. That is a very false. When we mention the story of Adam and Eve, we tell what happened. We are not blaming Eve alone. We are not blaming Adam alone. In fact, it is Muhammad who blamed Eve alone. If we go here in the hadith, he said, and this is not me saying that, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet said, if not for Bani Israel, which means the Jews, meat would not decay. They blame the Jews for anything. And where it's not for Eve, no women betray, ever betray her husband. So who is the one blaming the women for all sin in the world? Muhammad. Remember, the Messiah himself is born through a woman. So if every woman is bad, as Islam teach, then there is no way the Messiah himself chosen to be born of a woman. Her name is Mary. This is God himself is born through a woman. But the Mohammedan they claim that every woman is bad and the first woman is the reason for all bad which is coming from women. And Muhammad here he claim that all be the betrayal is coming from women. Men don't betray their wives. We go back to Zakir Naik, exposing more, more of those lies. Oh, we will go back to you later. Just wait. This guy, I think he was going live and his screen behind him did not work. The screen he usually he used like he have a studio and etc. So he have like a blanket or he painted the wall. But this time it did not work. So pff, the video came like this. All right. Let us go to Zuzu, the Corona Yuka. Before marrying a second woman or four women, but it happened number four, verse number three. Marry a woman of your choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. So Allah gives the permission for a Muslim man to marry two, three, or four women. But if they can't do justice, marry only one. So in Islam, it is permitted to marry up to maximum four wives. Mm -hmm. But if you can't do justice between. Remember, maximum four together. But he can divorce any time, any second, any of them, and replace her with a newer one, which means there's unlimited, really. All right? There's unlimited number of women. Let us see, there's a Mohammedan trying to call me. This is the same guy yesterday. He tried to, he claimed that he want to talk to me. When I call him, he declined my call. So I will try to call him. Let us go with, with Zakir Naik. It says he is not online. No, hold on, let me, with the speaker, okay. So based on this, it is not required for a married man to take the permission of his wife before marrying a second woman. Neither is he obliged or neither is it compulsory for him to inform 
the first wife that he's going to take a second wife. Here you see the 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 the, the, the essence of Islam. In Islam, lying is a permissible. A man he can lie to his wife, and even in a very sensitive topic, sleeping with other women. You call it marriage, I don't care. This is sleeping with other women. And now the man, as long as he do not need to tell his previous wife, he will do that, he will repeat that method with every woman he marry. So he will not tell the first wife about the new wife. He will not tell the second wife and the first wife about the third wife. He will not tell the first wife, second wife, and third wife about the fourth wife. Each one of them, she thinks she is married to a one alone man. And this is what Andrew Tate he used to do. If you watch his video, he has six girlfriends. Each one of them, she think he is the only boyfriend for her. This is what he said in his video. He contacted them. He opened his porn business according to the Islamic lawful way because the Quran legalized, as you know, in the Quran, al-bagha, uh, uh, which means prostitution. So he has six girlfriends sleeping with them. Each one of them, she think that he don't know anyone except her. She think he will marry her. So now the Muslim, they practice that legally, officially, but this time with four, not six. However, you can do it with six. How? You can date two other women, preparing yourself to divorce and have vacancies. Which mean, let us say I have four wives and I lie to all of them, claiming to be a marrying only one, which means whatever, one of them. I say to her, I married you only. I can be in relationship with other two or three women preparing myself to have a new woman to replace a woman I'm planning to divorce. I send her a text message, you are divorced, bingo. And as you know, she will take nothing except what is in the contract. As an example, when the Muhammad and they get married, they write a sex contract which says, if you divorce me, when you divorce me, you have, uh, you pay me before, down payment and there's a last payment so down payment let's say a thousand dollar if one day you divorce me you have to pay a hundred thousand dollar or maybe ten thousand dollar and maybe five the man usually try to manipulate the wife to have to make it low so he can have his freedom some women they think they are being smart so they say 100 million according to islamic sharia law does not accept it will be rejected the the, the contract is invalid because she is asking for something to hold him from divorcing her. So it have to be reasonable, like something accepted. So let us say she make it so expensive. I have actually, uh, 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 I know a Bedouin man. Uh, his name is Muhammad. He's a nice guy, actually. Uh, one day, uh, you know, I said to him, I did not see you for a while. You know, where you been? He said, man, you know, my dad, he did something crazy. I said, what? He said, imagine after 30 years, married to my mom, he dumped her. 30 years. And I said, well, you know what you can do? I mean, divorce can happen everywhere, not necessarily with Muslims. Even Christians, they can, you know, many Christians who don't not, not following God, you know, they jump to divorce because marriage has lost the value for many people. But then he told me, explained to me, what is the problem? He said, not only he married many women, but in the contract when he married her 30 something years ago she put like 10,000 pound or jene in the contract but at that time it was like equal to a million now they don't even buy a TV so after 30 years serving this man she get out with the money equal to buy a TV and now she is a very old woman. And this is exactly what Muhammad he did with Sauda. When Sauda, she become old, Sauda, the wife of Muhammad, whom Muhammad he sent her husband to die in war, so he can have her, 
And now the Muslim, they will say, no, this is not what happened. Her husband died, so he married her. He died of fighting for him. The same verse in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34, where it says that if a woman, she practiced neshud, beat them. The same word used in the Quran about if a man, he have a neshud, what the woman she can do? She better come to an agreement with him. When the poor woman, Sauda, heard that Muhammad is going to divorce her in such an age, according to Al-Qurtubi, the reason Muhammad, he want to divorce her because she become a damima, she is very ugly. Maybe Christian Prince is making things up. I can show it to you from Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, etc. Uh, but actually, let me let me show you. Hold on, give me a second. As long as we mention it, we better show it. This is Tafsir Al Tabari. We can show it from Al Qurtubi or any Tafsir. This is the good Muhammad, the best example of men. Chapter 4, verse number 124. The book of At Tabari, interpretation of the Quran, page number as you see, 99. Here it says, speaking about the case, how that can happen, what is the reason? A man, he don't want his wife no more, you know? He said, well, a man, he might don't like his wife because she becomes so ugly she is so old or even maybe she have a bad uh, behavior or maybe she is poor and she don't want to leave because if she left she is poor and this is what happened here to explain what happened with Muhammad Muhammad he have a wife, her name is Sauda. And she becomes so old. Muhammad don't, he don't sleep with her at all. At all, period. Here it says, reported from Ibn Abbas that Sauda, she was afraid that he would divorce her because he's not coming to her no more. She said, please, don't divorce me. And then what she did, she asked Aisha, who is the favorite dish to Muhammad, who liked to F her more than any other female, to take her D. So now she knew that Muhammad, he would like to spend more time with Aisha. So now they reach an agreement that he will keep this woman, but he will not sleep with her. No more. And this is what it says here in front of us. She gave her day to Aisha. Just keep me. This is how good Muhammad is. Instead of saying, you know what, this woman, she's old, where she will go? And not only that, a wife of Muhammad, she cannot remarry, which means she cannot even find a husband. So he stripped them even from the right to remarry again. If you go in the hadith, uh, actually, let us uh, show you here. Maybe we can find something in English better than this one. I will give the link anyway for those who want to use Google Translation. But maybe we should use Google Translation first. Um, okay, let's do that first to show you where it says that she is ugly. You go to number in the page where it says 10575, and then you count in Arabic here, you will count those, and then you will see where I highlighted. You know, she is ugly, she is old, she is a, she have a bad behavior, or maybe because she is poor. 
Let us use Google Translation. Remember, 10.5.75. There we go. 10.5.75. From, 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 okay. Yeah, it said, if a woman may be with the man, his, her, his eyes turn away from her because uh, the translation is coming false, because she is very ugly, uh, because she is arrogant, uh, she have a bad uh, 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 character or because she is poor you know and usually by the way uh, the word poor here isn't about she don't have money necessarily it can be she don't do pretty dancing for him she don't have a good skills in bed you know so in this case the man he would love to divorce his wife but in the case of Muhammad Aisha, she jumped to take advantage of this. And let me post the link for you. And she forced Aisha. She, sorry, uh, Aisha, she forced Muhammad because she have uh, uh, too much control of him sexually. He liked little children. His favorite sex toy. Uh, you will find this agreement here. Hmm. Do you see it? It says even when she become old with no shame. What is the guilt of this woman? In different hadith actually it says she become old and heavy and slow old and heavy and slow muhammad wanna dump her for that reason she is old she is not pretty no more Read it. All those stories in the front of you, giving us how women are treated in Islam. So the husband, he will be nice to you as long as you are young like Aisha. What do you do? You start kissing his ass. Please keep me. Well, don't throw me in the street. What I will do, please. Where are you? Where, where I will go? Okay, take my day and sleep with the other women. Uh, you know, I'm not going to ask you for anything. Just let me stay. This is how faith is religion is. Let me show you another hadith. I'm trying to find you where it says that she become uh, she become heavy. As you know, I don't prepare for what I do, so I search for my uh, reference, you know, right in the spot. Uh, let us see. Yeah, even there is some hadith saying that he did really divorce her. But then Aisha, she she made him keep her. 
I cannot find this one here, but I have it in other in the book of Al Bayhaqi. Uh, so imagine this woman, she married supposedly the best man in history, according to the Muhammadan. And the best man in history, he want to throw her in the street. In the same time, she is forbidden to remarry a new husband because she is the wife of Muhammad. This is how nice he is. He told the Muslims that my wives are your mothers. Uh, I have the reference actually, but I'm trying to find it in an official Islamic website. Let us see. Let us use this one here. The reason for Aisha to give her day. Uh, let us see here. Here we go. Here it says, Qala ibn Mulaqan أنه عليه السلام طلق سودا from Hisham from from his father he said in the book of Al Bayhaqi he said that he did divorce سودا and when he went out to pray she hold his dress the women the wife she begin him. Please, don't divorce me. I don't need men, but I want to stay your wife. Please. So he let her under the condition to give her day to Sauda. Let me use Google Translation. We search for divorce. Type in Arabic. It was said that the Prophet, uh, you know, he divorced her. Blah 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 blah. But let us see the story how she begged him holding his clothing. Uh, From the narration of Al Bayhaqi from Hisham, from 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 his father, he said that Allah Messenger peace be upon him divorced Sauda, and when she he went out to pray, she grabbed him from his garment, and she said, "I don't need men. I don't need men. Just keep me, please, keep me." And she gave her day to Aisha as an agreement. Aisha, she pressured him. She said, this way you can have more time with me. Keep her as a wife, which means Muhammad is even cheating now. In the days, the Aisha, she will have two more days than other women. Is that a behavior of a man? Appreciate a woman, especially she is from the earlier wives he married after Khadija? Is that what a man he do to a wife she served him when she was young? He dumped her because she become old. And this is the best example of God. And there is tons of, uh, you know, stories. Uh... Okay, let me let me see if I can find the one in Al Bukhari where it says she becomes slow. She is a slow. And Muhammad, you don't like slow women, old. He want to have brand new car, fluffy, doubly dancing. Dance for him, as the Hadith says. He asked Jabir, "Why you marry a widow? Why you don't marry a young child?" Here we go, we found it. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. It says that Sauda, 
to become slow to become old and slow do you see it why because simply she's an old woman she's an old woman let us see if we can show you more I mean this is enough right Different hadith, even they are using different word, which is nothing but an insulting. Unbelievable. <laughs> so the woman now, she cannot survive by herself. She's a poor woman. And this is the same woman, by the way. The reason for the hijab to come, it was because of her ass, if you remember. Because of her ass. So that she was doing poo-poo. And then Omar al-Khattab, he saw her at night doing poo-poo. And he was harassing her. He said to her, Arafnaki ya Sauda, we recognize you, Sauda. This woman, Sauda, she was big. This is the kind of Muhammad he like, women he like. He like big and beautiful, which means heavy duty, you know? Like, I don't want to use the word fat, but this one, it is in Arabic. Uh, so, uh, Omar, he saw her doing her poo-poo. Uh, he, he chased her. He said to her, we recognize you, Sauda. And then he went to his uh, Muhammad and he said to him, why you don't order your wives to cover themselves, man? When he is the one is chasing them and they are at night doing poo poo. And then Muhammad, he took what Omar he said and he make it Quran. That's why we will find that Omar he says, Wafaqtu Rabbi wa wafaqani Rabbi. Which means, My Allah agree with me and I agree with Allah. In what? In Quran. Allah he copied the Quran of Omar. According to this hadith here, three things. Omar he said Allah he took it as he said and he make it Quran there's other reference about 10 things there is some they say even way more but you will notice here that the story of the hijab the reason this Muslim woman now who married a Muslim man in New Zealand she may, she is wearing hijab because of the ass of Sauda if Sauda her ass was not involved Muhammad will not order the hijab which is very weird because the man he, she was doing poo poo and she was at night so I cannot even see her hair I mean those people they have dark hair so what the hijab for it doesn't make sense however you will notice that whatever uh, Omar he said become Quran so the ayah came as I have said as I said word by word read it all of this is sahih the funny is the muhammadan they say can you make quran like the quran then we find that allah copying Umar al khattab word by word Read carefully. This is not me saying that. Let me show you. It's not me who's saying that the Quran came down about the hijab as Omar he said. No. Omar said that. So the verse, he's talking about all the list of the verses. They come down the same as I had said, word by word. In fact, even Muhammad, he said, if there is a prophet will come after me, it's going to be Omar, because Omar, he got him busted many times. Right? Uh, 
Hmm. Anyway, do we have any Muhammadan wanna have anything, wanna say anything to us? So when those people they lie to you about women she have rights in Islam, I mean as you see the Muslim they have no shame even to lie about their religion, to lie to their wives. They teach us, they teach it, they preach it, they are proud about it. Even they teach in their TV, official Islamic TV, government TV, how to be the wife. They are proud of it. تخيل يا دكتور ان المراه الاوروبيه في الوقت الحاضر بتنشد الرجل القوام انا يعني the guy saying to the sheikh imagine imagine that women in the west they are desperate to find a man he is strong how he is strong and he have some statics like he have studies official studies watch with me هدي المشاهدين سريعا كده بعض احصائيات سريعه عن هذا الامر تسعين في المية من نساء بريطانيا ما بيحبوش يتزوجوا من الرجل الضعيف اللي اول ما تحصل اول مشكله او اي 90% of women in England they don't like to marry a weak man we want to know what weak man mean we will find out soon what weak man is what is that exactly weak man maybe he cannot carry uh, his wife to bed Maybe he is coward. We, what is weak man? Let us see. 90%. The Muslim, they have all the percentage you want about anything. That's it. 90%. Hmm. But why not 100%? I mean, I cannot believe that there's any women in the world she want to marry a weak man. Why, why, should, why should I do that? 90% only? Ah, it's just that the number. Okay, go. راجل اها قضية الضرب دي شبهة خطيرة جدا نعم واحدة واحدة معانا مولانا أقول إن الله كرم المرأة بهذه العقوبة عقوبة الضرب الله he honored Muslim women by beating them Do you hear me? Lady from New Zealand You marry a Muslim man and you are start doing a business now Islam now Donate to me and you say Islam honor you? Who is going to believe? You or them? You who converted to Islam two years ago after you marry a man? Or those sheikhs who they are teaching officially, the one who spend their life studying Islam? Who millions of people, they take their opinion and they die for it? You or them? This is an ex-Muslim, by the way. It is not our topic. So, Allah, he honored Muslim women by beating. Let us be honest. I mean, can you honor a woman more than this? Why those people cannot use their mind and be honest? Allah, he honor you. What is such an amazing honor? I'm sure this woman from New Zealand, she would love it now. خطيرة جدا. نعم. واحد واحدة معنا مولانا. أقول إن الله كرم المرأة بهذه العقوبة عقوبة. Let me make the text more clear, so you can see it. So Allah He honored wives by in, in stating the punishment of beating. Explain to us, Sheikh. عقوبة الضرب. Hmm. كيف؟ كرمها بالضرب. هي والله مش معقول. The guy saying, really, he did honor her by beating. And by the way, like they're playing like the, the good cup cup, both of them, this is an Islamic program, so both of them, they agree totally. But it's just to make it like more entertaining. Really? Allah, you honor her by beating how? Oh, كيف? كيف? قال نبينا صلى الله عليه وعلى الله وسلم ولا تضرب الوجه Beat her everywhere, but don't beat her face. Do you see how he honor her? People, do you see how Allah he honored the Muslim women beat her everywhere but don't beat the face Abdul but Allah Prophet he said don't beat the man in his face too because he looked like Adam what does this have to do with honoring he's not honoring the woman he is honoring Adam <laughs> and now you are beating the women and now you are honoring her 
Man, that is really an honor. I mean, look at this. Reported Allah Messenger saying, if any of you fight with, uh, 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 he must avoid the face. Why? Because Allah created Adam in his image. What does this have to do with honoring? So I honor you by beating you in your butt and your chest. Like what Muhammad did. She said, Haddajani ala sadri. He, you know, he did hit my chest and I have a bad pain because of it. It turned to be that is for your benefit and you are just being weird. Shame on you. Why people do not see? Oh, we will go back to those guys, you know, to for our love. Where is the video? Too many videos I have open in my screen, so I, I have to jump from one to one, sorry. Allah. شوف كرمها إن ضربها لا يضربها على وجهها حتى وهو يضربها لا يسبها ولا even when he beat her he should not curse her this is how this is the ethic of a Muslim man you beat her yes you made her skin blue green from beating yes but don't curse her and don't hit her face we honored women and this woman from New Zealand she said that Islam protect women protect women from who if he beat her he don't break bones I mean, do you see, guys? You don't beat your wife until you break her bones. You stop. Don't break bones. We have rules. No bones breaking. <laughs> and this is how Allah, he honored the women. But the liar, they say to us, that in Islam, we beat them by toothbrush. Now we are talking about not to break bones. And this is this, this 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 woman who is making a business of donation, lying to her teeth about how women in Islam is protected. If there is any Muhammadan can say I'm lying, as you see, I'm showing you your cleric. I'm showing you what it is in your TV. So we can lie to our wives. A real man is the man who marries second wife. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. You should not have attempted this from the first place. If you are not a man enough to get married to a second woman, don't even dream about it. A real man, a man enough is the one who gets second and third and fourth. A real man is the one who beat his wife. A real man is the one who, when she got old, he dumped her like Muhammad did. And a real man is the one who lied to his wife and marry a second wife. Me, hijab, brother Sirtaj, the wood on lie detector test. And they said the following questions. Would you love your wife? Yes, pass. Would you die for her? Yes, pass. If your wife was okay, would you get a second wife? Yes, pass. There is not a conflict between a man loving his wife and a man wanting to be polygamous. I agree. There is no conflict. And then he asked him about if he can lie. He said, yes, you can lie for sure. A man, he loved his wife in Islam since when? If you love your wife, you don't marry a second wife. You love all your wives? Really? Let us go and see if Muhammad loved his wife. Do Muhammad love his wives? And they got, you know, and the funny is, uh, they got four women in the age of a grandmother, yet none of them in the age of Aisha. But I thought the Prophet, he married Aisha at the age of six, and she was mature. And even Mimi Hijab, he confirmed, 
that yes, in Islam, even the chapter of Al Talaq uh, uh, speak about divorcing children. Why you don't invite girls at the age of six? Who are those? Those are women now. Those are grandmother in Islam. Where is the real women in Islam? The six years old. And then the Muslim women, because Islam protect women, they are talking about protect women, not men, not men. They are talking about the amazing teaching of Allah. Is that you, yeah? I'm possibly what I if we're talking about secret sec second wife, if my husband has gone behind my back, that to me is cheating. Okay. Even if okay. it is Fine. Islamically correct. Feminist sisters who even if it is Islamically correct. Their sisters who will die for their sisters will take a bullet for their sisters, but will not share their husbands for their sisters. So the point is this, you know. Let me be real, yeah. If you love your, if you got a good husband, by the way, I'm not talking about these guys who don't pray, jahil clowns, yeah. Oh, we are not talking about the bad Muslims. We are talking about the good Muslims who pray. Those are the ones who have secret wife. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> who don't pray, who oppress their wives. A good man who practices. Oh, he don't oppress his wife by marrying a second wife and third wife and fourth. This is not oppression. No, 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 no. This is the right thing to do who fears Allah, who's good to his wife, takes care of his wife. Uh -huh. He comes and he says, I want a second wife. All hell breaks loose. And then we blame this man. Yeah, but why are you keeping it a secret? What else should he do? See? You blame the man for doing a secret wife? Huh? I thought Muslim women are happy women. It turned to be that Muslim women don't like to get a new... A new... <laughs> This is a test to see how Allah is testing her to see how she responds. Mm, yeah. Ah, it turned to be this is a test from Allah. The man he want to have sex with other women. Allah want to see your reaction. If you are a good woman, you say to him, husband, go and if more. Husband, come on. Do you want to find your son? Allah is testing them. This is called the testicle test. That's, you know, if she decides to do the opposite, which is, you know, um, you know, throw the divorce card or throw this card, then yeah, ultimately yeah. she's falling into the act of disobedience. Thank you. Man, the women, if she asks for divorce after she find out her husband is sleeping with other women, she is being disobedient. Not the husband. No, it is the women, this opinion. And who is explaining that to you? Women. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Which I'm now expected as a Muslim man to follow. It's not the religion of Al Islam, it's the religion of women's feelings. I'm not going to follow that religion. See, we don't follow women feeling, you stupid idiot, dummy. Who care about feeling? We follow Islam. With respect to you, I'm not going to do a uh, prostration to the collective hormonal and emotional status of men or women or children or anybody else. You're saying if he's man enough, if your husband came to you man enough and said to you he wants a second wife. At least then it's not secret. Sister, I knew one about second, one second, it. One second, one second, one second. Do you know about it? Are you going to, what are you going to do? Are you going to say to me, yeah, you can? Thank you. Your face is no. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say to him, you can't? This is Islam. <laughs> what are you going to do? I want to know what you're going to do. I want to know what you are going to do. Well, my friend, I will tell you what you can do. You can report him to the authority. He will go to jail. They live in the West. You are a potato, all of you. Cowards. Cowards. So look at those people, how double standard they are. They are claiming to be a rich citizen. They carry a passport, have a cross on it. They took an oath when they got citizenship to be obedient to the law, and they are discussing wide open having secret marriage. Legally, officially, according to Allah teaching. Showing you how much the Muslim woman she is oppressed. And they are showing you that the good woman is the one who this uh not the one who dislike. Actually, I just remember something. Uh, Muhammad, he spoke about women who complain about their husbands because they beat them. Uh, what is a hadith? Hold on, let me remember. Let us see. <clears throat> oh, 
a, a group of women who complain about their husband beating them. Muhammad, he said, those women who go around complain about their husband, they beat you. They are not the best of yours. Uh, Let us see. Read with me and see how filthy this religion is. And the Muslim translation, as usual, they try to cover it up. So here it says, and this is Sahih, you know, this is not, this is authentic, very authentic. As you see, all those references are authentic. Uh, so those women who complain about their husband beating them they are not the best among you do you see it women many women they came to Muhammad and told him many women they have gone around Muhammad family complaining of their husband those who do so that is those who take to beating their wives look, look at the first translation you know those who do what those who take to beating their wives are not the best of you. You see how they mix it? The women who they are doing that, they are not the best of you. Let me, let's go to, to the previous one. Unbelievable. See, look. You see the, the other translation, how they lie? So, I said many women have gone around Muhammad family complaining against their husband. They are not the best among you. Who? The women. Muhammad, he gave the men permission to beat the women. And those women who go around complaining about their husband beating them, they are not the best of you. And this is authentic. This is Islam. How many of you will promise to download the video and share it everywhere? I'm going to download it, I'm going to post it in Rumble, and I'm going to make it an enlisted link, which means you can see it only in Patreon. Not because uh, uh, I want, you know, on Patreon, you can watch it for free. I mean, you can, uh, you don't even need to log in. But I know the Mohammedan, they will go crazy for this video. So we will download it. We will post it around. You can go to Patreon, click at the link and download it. And I will take the same video and post it in my account in Rumble, which I start loading. I have only two videos there. All right, and as you see, not a single Muslim he dare to call us. Do you know why? Because everything we said is true. Oh, I remember now the woman she said in the other video that she have an orphan charity. Islam encouraged to support the orphan. Shame on you. First of all, I don't know how you can support them. You've never been in those countries. However, in the Quran, how you support the orphan is by having sex with them. Have you ever heard of faith religion like this? How we support the orphan? Uh, this chapter here, chapter 4, verse number 24, uh, is about having sex with married women. But let us go to the orphan. <laughs> it turned to be that if you want to be nice to the orphan, you have to F the orphan. Chapter 4, verse number 3. But the word orphan is something we say to children. Correct? 
if a woman she is 19 20 21 she is not an orphan do we agree the word orphan is for someone is a child so how in Islam we support orphan read carefully if you fear if you fear that you will not act justly toward the orphan well there is nothing there about marriage what you know read carefully marry such women as seem good to you two and three and so the the orphan is the one you have sex with first if you don't want go and f women two and three and four if we go to chapter 65 verse number uh, uh, four that chapter is speaking about divorcing children. Actually, the verse itself, the chapter itself, is the chapter of divorce. Children who never had their period because they are too young. Even Mimi Hijab, he agree, and all the Muslims there, those potato on YouTube, they agree, yes, you can have sex with children. What the problem? What is the problem? What's your problem? What is your problem? Hmm? Ah, I'm typing in Arabic in YouTube. Okay. Mm. Let us see. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal. It would just it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, Wallahi lam yahidn. Wallahi lam yahidn. And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important, yeah? I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's not because of puberty because that verse in the Quran actually says, Lam yahidn. They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. The Quran doesn't say, doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that the woman has to be pubescent. I dare you to find one verse in the Quran I dare you. where it says you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm or you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm, or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. So if you're a Quran alone, you're allowed to have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be pubescent. One verse. I want one verse in the Quran from the beginning of the book to the end of the book which says that she has to be pubescent. So okay, so that makes it halal from your perspective. From your perspective, it's halal. You know in the Quran it says, It says you're not allowed to marry your mom. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a, a pretty person? I'm looking for one verse that you, you can say, you pinpoint it and say this is where it says, prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. So if you're Quran alone, you're still towards pedophilia and a severe type of pedophilia. Can you believe it? He just admitted that if you have sex with the children, you are a bit of fire. If you read the Quran alone, you are a bit of fire. Okay, we refer the Hadith. Isn't it your prophet he married Aisha at the age of six? <laughs> he mentioned that there is nowhere it says you cannot marry someone she is five. Does it make a difference between five and six? We showed you that how Muhammad, uh, uh, how Aisha, her mother, she was feeding her like a goat so she can gain weight. 
And this is stupid women trying to fool women in her countries and around the world that Islam is an amazing religion. Here, we don't compromise. We share the truth and the truth only. And the truth will set you free. The Lord, he says, that who is the father of all lies? Who is the father of all lies? The devil. They lie. They lie to their teeth. Islam without lies dies. And this is why we see an avalanche. You see those Muhammadan, even the one who disagree with us and they fight against us, etc. Slowly, 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 they will end leaving the garbage of Muhammad. In the beginning, they will be stubborn. They will be angry. They will be aggressive. But they will not. You know what? He is putting the reference in front of us. We have even videos of their own explaining how having sex with the children is right. We have their own words saying this is a pedophile act. The Quran teaches nothing but to be a pedophile. And what Mimi Hijab trying to say to you, the girl, she have to be able to be if excuse my language. It's not the age. It's not the age. This is how filthy this cult is. So again, if you want to watch the video, you will find the link only in Patreon, which means going to be here for some time, and then we will delete and we will keep it only in Ramble or wherever they want to load the video. And I will see you soon again. I want to say thank you all for being here. And glory to the Lord. Women in Christianity is treated equally one man one wife a decent man a decent woman marriage in Christianity is real marriage for it's not a contract of sex it's not a contract of finance it is a unity by God have nothing to do with all what they say when a man he marry a woman the Bible says they will become one. One. When God, he created Adam, he created one female for him. That is the right way. And this is the natural way. And anything else is nothing but lust of animals. Lust of animals. Animal, he jumped from a female to female. If other male came, the one who is more strong, he will take, he will dominate. That is not us. We are a human. We are not animals. And we refuse to be animals. Muhammad, he wants you to be an animal. Treating your wife as an animal. She's just a goat. Her job is just to take off her panty and give you babies and cook for you. And one day you don't like her, you divorce her. Or even keep her. Just another woman without her in her. Because she is nobody. She is nobody. She's just a maid in the house. If she gets old, they throw her away. So when those liars, they say, Islam respect women, how Islam respect women and Islam make you equal to dogs and donkey. Even Aisha, she said, Shabbatumuna bil hamir, ul kilab. You made us equal to dogs and donkeys, but this is what her husband did. They are doing what Muhammad said, that a dog and a donkey and a woman they will, will, will defy your, your, your prayer. She said, you made us equal to dogs and donkeys. And showing them how Muhammad was hypocrite when he used to pray, he used to touch her, touch her. But he is the one who said, three things would defy your prayer, a dog and a donkey and a woman. It's, it's Muhammad who said that. So she did not dare to say, Muhammad, he made us equal to dogs and donkeys. She said to them, you made us. Let us go to the other hadith. And you will see Muhammad. He said it clearly. Dog and a donkey and a woman. They 
div, you know, they say they, they, they say dog cut the prayer. No, that's not what it says. This is not about cutting. It's about making your your prayer invalid, invalid, invalid. Read carefully. This is how Muhammad he look at women. And the funny is, Aisha she sleep her legs open in front of Muhammad and Muhammad praying between her legs. But yet he said to them, to the Muslims, women are equal to dogs and donkeys, and they will make they will defy your prayer. All is all of this is a very authentic. Not only that, this woman she said, I forgot to mention this, very important. She said that Muslim women they are respected, right? Muslim women are protected. Well, your prophet he says that the women she come in the image of the devil and she live in the image of the devil. Is he speaking about you? I would like you to add in the video the word New Zealand because she is from New Zealand. So women in New Zealand will not be fooled by such an evil woman trying to lie to them to her teeth. Either she is evil, she know what she is doing, she's lying, or she is stupid. Either way, that is evil. So as you see, Muhammad, he said, this is how women are protected in Islam, that a woman, she is a devil. Are you going to print this to your wife and put it in the top of her bed? Women, she advanced in the image of the devil and she retreat in the image of the devil. What about you print this and put it in the top of your mother grave? What about you print this, put it in the top of your mother bed? Why don't Muslim make a speech in your TV, in your essay, when you speak in the speaker corner, says, women approach in the image of the devil and they retrieve in the image of the devil. And why? Just because she walked in front of Muhammad and because Muhammad is a decent man, he was staring at her ass. So he got horny. He went to his wife. He forced his wife Zainab, who was doing lathering, uh, uh, painting, coloring. He forced her into sex. Even Muhammad, he said, uh, a woman should, re, should answer the call of her husband, which means to F her, excuse my language, even if she is in the saddle of the camel, on the camel. If a woman actually, she don't want to have sex, maybe she is tired, maybe she is not, don't feel like it, maybe she is uh, whatever, you know. The angels will curse her all night. But if the man, he do the same, nobody curse him. Because this is the religion of the man. The man, he can have four. He can refuse. Actually, the Quran, chapter 4, verse 34 says, oh, Stop sleeping with them. Jail them in their rooms and stop. But the women, she cannot do that. If she don't go to bed, the angels all night are angry cursing her continue until the morning until she take off her panty this is how women she is protected in islam and this we are the women donation women donate to me claiming that muslim women are respected not to forget that the muslim man he will get a lot of female for sex and he will be in heaven just a sex toy not to forget to mention that even in heaven you will be jailed in your tent in your tent you cannot see anybody except one man or you are a sex toy and this is all over the Quran the Huris and the wives they will be restrained in their tents look at the translation here what cool prevalence what it's a cool huh it's a cool okay mm. very cool uh-huh yeah look like the muslim they copy from each other the translation mm. what a nice jail for eternity just to be effed 
just to be effed. And this is heaven, supposedly. You have no duty in the heaven of Allah. You see, the Muslim women, they say, oh, we will go to heaven. As you see, Muhammad, he said, the majority of women are in hell. Number two, if you get lucky, you will be a sex toy. Not only that, in the heaven of Allah, you will be competing with a lot of women, with one man. Which means in earth, maybe you got lucky and you have one husband because he live in the West, he don't dare to have a second one unless he go to the Middle East and he do it behind you. Or in the West, but behind you. But in heaven, he will have hundreds of women and you are just one of his sex toys. Not only that, actually Muhammad, he promised that in heaven, uh, Allah will import women who they are hookers from hell for they have a good training in sex and they have big boobs and nice asses and vagina he will import them from hell let us see if we can find the hadith <laughs> See, like each time when I go we remember to mention something, you know. Yeah. So Allah will, will import to a Muslim man. This is the bad Muslim man, not the good one. The good one will get way more. 70 women. This is for the bad man. The bad one only. So it says here, Muhammad is swear by Allah, that Allah will admit to paradise, Allah will marry him to 72 wives. Two from the Huris and 70 from the inheritance of the people of hell. Here you ask yourself, where is the female, the Muslim women, to be the wife? Focus with me. Allah will give him how many women? 72, correct? Okay. Two women, they are the virgins, the Hur. 70, they are from hell so where is this woman from New Zealand will be are you following with me that's mean you will not be there 70 will be from hellfire those are in his inheritance two are the virgins who Allah made them in hell in heaven for effing, they are so good in bed. Where you will be? Well, I have a better news for you. Most likely, Muhammad, he meant that all those 70 are Muslim women anyway. However, they have to be very good looking. Read carefully with me, it says. Uh, and 70 from the inheritance, his inheritance from the people of hell all whom will have desirable front passages and he will have a male member that will never become flaccid i.e. soft and limp and this woman she is telling us about amazing religion spiritual relationship with Allah when all of Islam is about penises and vagina and orgasm of 70 years and Muhammad is stuck with number 70 the orgasm of a Muslim man is 70 years in heaven oh that's mean how many years the sex itself and then 70 years orgasm and we do not know he's not mentioned how many years of the sex itself with the women but then the second woman another 70 years so if this guy he have all those women just those women i'm not going to count the endless number muhammad he came with what we will find let me show you how funny the number will be so I will take the 72, each one of them 70 years orgasm. 72 x 70, just the orgasm alone. 5,040 years. 
which mean if the man he is just having orgasm with you 70 years he will have sex with you again after 5040 years after that you have to wait your legs is open excuse my language for 5040 years before you are going to be boom boomed by his majesty who his penis great news will never go limp and here you see how Muhammad is a filthy man you know we cannot compare between him and the Messiah God forgive me for even mentioning the name the two names in one line that is not the Holy God teaching that is a filthy disgusting street man even street men they will not speak filthy like this man Imagine you are standing in a now and somebody claiming to be a prophet. Imagine Muhammad, he just came to us and he just said this to us. How stupid are you to listen to such a man? He's a pimp. They call him holy. They worship him. They die for him. They kill for him, for he's satanic. Satan always use money and sex to control the mind of many. Any tools which all of it is about physical physical and if he can make it emotional that is even going to be better that is not what God is about when they asked Jesus about who is going to have this woman when she go to heaven he said he and she they will not get married the same as angels they will be so me and a female Christian we will be in heaven equally I will not have 70 virgins to sleep with me and she will not have 70 men to sleep with her. We will be without needs. When the Messiah, he said the same as angels, did you think about it? What does that mean? That means we will be free. Free. We will not be addicted. We will not be enslaved by our needs. Because now we are enslaved. You have to sleep. You have no choice. Can you stay without sleep? I would love to. When you are 60 years old, you step to 20 years. 20 years of your life is gone. Doing nothing, just sleeping. But we have no choice. We have to eat. We have to cover ourselves in the cold. We have to get heat. We have to, we, we have to, we have to. We are under the needs when you are with Jesus you will be free from all your needs in heaven with the Messiah you will not get married she will not get married because the purpose of marriage is not there the purpose of marriage and sex is to reproduce and we reproduce because there's death I don't want to turn it now to like to make it about the Bible now but this is the reason we reproduce death take one take the father children they will continue but now we are in heaven and this heaven is going to be totally different because now we are in the real heaven not in the garden of adam and eve which was on earth We cannot compare between the faith of Muhammad and the love of the Messiah. No man can claim that he chose the Messiah because it gave him a privilege. Somebody will say to you, will Christianity give the man? He is the leader of the house. Well, that is the leader of the house for he have responsibility, not because 
he is God of the women. Muhammad, he said, if a woman, if you want to ask a woman to do something, to worship somebody, is to worship her husband. He made the husband God. With the Messiah, the women, she have the right to have one husband. And the husband, he have no right except to have one woman. The Jews used to abuse women. They marry, they divorce. They get, she got old, he replace her, he got a new one. The same as the Muhammadan. With the Messiah, you cannot do that. You cannot abuse that you are the male who is strong and she is the female, she is weak, so I do as I wish. With Muhammad, this is the religion of the privilege of the man. For everything is made for the man and by the man. Not the opposite. I have many women who left Islam speaking to me, as you know. And all of them agree. The reason, number one reason, they leave Islam because they notice that Islam is a religion of the man. However, I'm not that man who will take such a religion to be my religion because I have to be a pervert, filthy, agree with having sex with the children, taking my neighbor or my own son wife as Muhammad did to Zainab. Zainab, the wife of his own son, he went to the house and he flirted with her when she is married. And Allah told him, why you are hiding what you have in your heart? Imagine, can you believe there's God encouraging a man to flirt with married women? And this woman is married to his son. Imagine, forget about son. Imagine you have a friend. He come to your house. You trust the man. That's why he's coming alone. That's why he is in the house when the husband is not there. Because he's trustworthy, supposedly. Because the neighbors will not speak about why he is coming. Remember, this is a Middle Eastern society. Why a man coming alone? Because he's the father. He can get in. Nobody will question why. If a man, he come alone and the husband is not home, that is a disaster. That means the woman, she is cheating. Muhammad entered the house. The husband is not there. What he do? And this is the Muslim story. This is the Muslim side of the story. Of it, the story is far away from this. He flirted with the wife. And what the wife, she said, that when Muhammad, he flirted with her, each time her husband said, he want to F her, Allah, he made his penis as well. While Jesus making the blind see, healing the leopard, resurrecting people from death, Allah was busy making the husband penis as well. This is his miracle. When first time I just saw this, I mean, you are learning, you know, as a child, you learn, and then I I did not understand what what to warrama min hu dalik. What do you mean? Imagine the filthy wife claiming that she have a god, and now because he don't want the husband to sleep with her. Because his father, he want to F her. Does God, he is now looking at the penis of Zaid. And he, each time he tried to get close to her, he made his penis as well. This is Tafsir, this is not our books. This is not our books. This is a chapter of Al Ahzab, verse number 37. Page number 423, Al-Qurtubi, the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Each time the husband, he want to F his wife, Allah, he made his penis swell. 
Use Google Translation. Let me post for you the link. This is a religion made only designed for the penis of Muhammad. And then Muhammad, he used the penis of the men around him to give them more privilege, but for sure not like his privilege. So he make a penis god religion. In Japan, they make a penis, big penis, and they walk behind it, a festival. In Islam, the penis is Muhammad. And I find it astonishing that this is what they say about what happened in their books. This is not the books of the enemies. This is not books written about Muhammad by Christian prince. This is what is written by the Muslims after they took off all the bad things about Muhammad. Each time the husband want to come to the wife to F her, excuse my language, I'm saying it as it is. That's what it says. Each time he tried to F her, Allah, he made his penis swell. Shame on you, Zaid. Zaid, why you are trying to approach your wife? She is now for Muhammad. And not only that, even they say that one of the privilege of Muhammad, if his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the Prophet can F her. Can you believe how filthy? And then they speak to you, this woman, she speak, spirituality in Islam. In Islam, you have relationship with Allah. When in fact, she is nothing but a vagina in Islam. Allah himself is not even a spirit. The Prophet is a pervert. In every way, in every mean. If his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. So the Prophet can F her immediately. Isn't it this is really so beautiful? It is. Allah, he cared for Prophet Muhammad. So he said to himself, well, you know what? What if Muhammad visiting one of his friends or walking in the street and he saw a woman he liked? The husband must divorce her. Privilege number 10. إِذَا وَقَعَ بَصَرَهُ عَلَىٰ إِمْرَأَ وَجَبَ عَلَىٰ زَوْجَهَا طَلَاقُهَا وَحَلَّ لَهُ نِكَاحُهَا Number 10, and you will notice even all of them is about sex and money. If the prophet eyes fall into a woman, her husband must immediately divorce her so the prophet can F her. And this crazy woman trying to lie to her own country people that in Islam, there is a religion where is the number 10? I'm trying to find it. Hmm. <laughs> where is the... I'm trying to find the translation if his eyes fall into a woman. Okay, let's see. Here we go. If his side, number 10, if his side, his side who? Muhammad, falls on a woman, her husband must divorce her so the Prophet can if her. They say here, translation, lawful. No. So the Prophet can if her, not to marry her. Have you ever heard of a per pervert Prophet like this? And they claim that this is from God. Is it if this is from God, what is from Satan? 
What is Satan? This is Satan, my friend. This is not from God, period. No man will respect any man. He go to his friend or anyone he knew or he see. This is a gang behavior. Because you are a gang, you are a holako. You are Jankees Khan. You like the women, you take the whole tribe if you want. You are unjust, you are a criminal. In which right you take the wife of a man? Just because her your eyes fall on her and you like her. How you can justify that? Well, no problem. There's no need to justify. He's a prophet of Allah. And that give his penis all the privilege. For this is a penis, penis God. The penis Muhammad and the penis Allah and the penis book is all about penises. And how to obey Mr. Penis. Everything is made for him. Muhammad and for his penis this is the truth and the Lord he always said to us read the books search for the truth look for it and the truth will set you free and the Lord he says I am the truth not this faith in Muhammad so those females who they marry a Muslim man and they try to sell you Islam and to make money from business in YouTube and donation we are here to expose their lies so they will not be able to, to deceive your daughters. If you care for your wife, you care for your daughter, young, share with them. Don't be a fool. They are working hard to deceive your children. One day your daughter, she will come back home and she will say, Dad, I want to marry a husband. He's a Muslim. Oh, Dad, I want to convert to Islam. And then you come to Christian Prince says, help me, I will not help you. You don't deserve my help because you heard me already a thousand times. And you did nothing. You've been warned. You've been taught. We give you reference. We give you proofs. We pray video for you. I spend hours every day. In the other day, I spend 11 hours in one day. So don't tell me, I need your help. I did my part. Do your part, protect your family, and not protecting them by shouting at your kids, says Islam is bad, show them, prove it to them. Teach them in early age so they can be immune from the devil Muhammad. So I want to say thank you. And until I see you again, this is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. God bless. And again, the video will disappear from here. You can find the link in Patreon. And you do not need to make a donation. You go there, it's for free. Click at the link there, download the video, share it around. God bless and see you soon again.